As we enter into the Scarlet and Violet metagame, certain Pokémon will find themselves in paradise. Others will be plunged into the depths of hell. In today's video, we'll be taking a tour in the Gen 8 Afterlife to see which Pokémon will suffer for their sins and which will be blessed by Arceus. As we approach hell, we find ourselves in Limbo, where Zapdos resides. Zapdos will be losing a few moves, both offensive and defensive, that tend to be important for it. For example, in Gen 8, Zapdos has generally ran more offensive sets, and on rain teams specifically, it uses Weather Ball to break ground types that would otherwise give it a problem. However, Zapdos must count its blessings, for while it does suffer limitations, it is not as bad as it was in BDSP, where it lost even Heat Wave. Zapdos also still has static and great typing, so it should provide some form of utility in whichever tier it ends up in. Serena loses Knockoff and Triple Axel, which are very important for her. Knockoff especially is a major deal, since Serena usually finds herself in a support role, knocking off items and spinning away hazards. With decent coverage and a low enough tier, Serena will surely still be used, but will have a lot fewer chances to shine. It doesn't take very long to realize why Slowbro will suffer in Gen 9. Losing Toxic, Scald, and Slack off PP is already awful, but losing Teleport will cement Slowbro's fall from the OU tier. It doesn't help it either that many powerful Dark and Ghost-type Pokémon will be crowding the upper tiers, making it difficult for Slowbro to tank hits. Charizard may have returned to the game, but it may be wishing that it hadn't. Losing Scorching Sands and Toxic forces Charizard to run Earthquake for Colossal, and losing Defog ruins Charizard defensively. Offensively, perhaps Charizard can pull something off, but it may end up a Sisyphean effort, as it will inevitably fall to the lower tiers. The more you have, the more you stand to lose. Landorus may still have a great typing, amazing ability, and a new signature move to play with, but when a large portion of your game plan goes out the window, it'll be hard to find a way to remain relevant. It doesn't help that Landorus will struggle breaking past Corviknight. Landorus may remain relevant in the OU tier, but he may finally see its long reign as the king come to an end. Indeed, he offers Psychic Surge to its allies, but there are few allies that have interest in such an ability in Generation 9. And when you lose your strongest move and crucial coverage, your many other flaws will be quickly brought to light. Indeed, he may have lost Mystical Fire, but it will surely be feeling the heat. Now that Zaceon has left the Galar region, Game Freak has decided to thrust it down to the hottest pits of hell. An attack stat drop for both forms is just the start of the problems for this sword-bearing canine. It also has to contend with a hugely nerfed ability, the return of many Pokémon that help to deal with it, and a new sword-bearing legendary getting all the attention. On top of that, Zacian might still be banned from the Uber's tier. Nerfed and then still banned? For shame. Everyone will now see Rillaboom for what he truly is. This gorilla almost fell down the tier list hard in Gen 8, before the Isle of Armor saved it in spectacular fashion, giving it one move that completely revolutionized the metagame. Now, however, Rillaboom will have lost its most defining feature, as well as crucial coverage moves. It may still have a decent moveset, and knockoff is always appreciated, but there's no way this guy hangs out in OU any longer. And in the ninth circle, at the very center of Inferno itself, is the demon Toxapex, flanked by Suicune and Vaporeon. Losing Scald has damned these Pokémon to eternal suffering, and that isn't the only nerf they've received. In this circle of hell reside all those bulky water types that have previously stood in the way of offensive teams. Burning, Toxicking, and otherwise punishing would-be setup sweepers. Without these tools, Players were turned to the new gods to save them from the power creeped onslaught. After passing through hell, we find ourselves on the other side of the world and ready ourselves to ascend purgatory. At the base of the mountain, we are greeted by Umbreon, who greets all those who pass here with the message that, even in this realm, much suffering awaits. Umbreon mourns the loss of Heal Bell, 
which has been a part of its move pool for generations. Thankfully, it can still wish past, and may prove useful against many prominent ghost and psychic attackers in the upcoming game. Additionally, since many Pokemon lost Toxic, this may all work out in the end for Umbreon. Much has been said about Greninja's nerfs. Protean and Battle Bond alike were dismantled, as Arceus looked down upon his creation and sought to teach it humility. Greninja sought mercy and was granted some reprieve, retaining most of its move pool and its high speed tier. While Protean won't be what it once was, choice sets will remain mostly intact and even physical sets may become popular. Dragonite has experienced many different ups and downs throughout the generations. All it asks for is some good flying coverage. Unfortunately, it will lose the only decent physical flying coverage that it had in Gen 8. While returning to a non-stab set seems inevitable, Dragonite takes solace in the lack of Scald and Toxic, meaning that it may find more setup opportunities in the future. Scizor finds itself at a very interesting point coming into Generation 9. With Terrastalizing promising the Fire-type coverage to many Psychic types that once struggled to beat it, Scizor prays that the Terra Phenomenon will be banned as soon as possible. Scizor also loses Roost and Santum, further hampering its efforts to return to OU. However, a more offensive-based approach may yet prove useful, with close combat being added to its arsenal. And with a Steel Terra Bullet Punch at plus 2, Scizor may find life anew in the new game. A passive mindset means you find yourself in peril of losing everything. For Blissey, it will have to work twice as hard in this new game to produce any kind of result. Fortunately, Blissey still has the same stats to do what it has always done, while special attackers. Being the only form of heal bell in the entire game certainly doesn't hurt either. Terror Blast may be a godsend or may spell destruction for Heatran. The future is unclear. If Terrastalizing is banned, then Heatran won't have to worry either way. In that case, it will surely miss Toxic, which allows it to break through bulky waters and grounds that otherwise trouble it. Having to land Magma Storm is always a risk as well. Perhaps in this generation, with the lack of Scald, Lava Plume and Flame Body will save the day? No longer the ruler of his clan, Bisharp has been further punished with the loss of Knockoff. The knockoff nerf might be a blessing in disguise, however, as the Eviolite is now available to him, and with his higher speed tier compared to his evolution, Bisharp may still see some limited competitive play in higher tiers. Rayquaza has long wished for the day where it could gain momentum and pivot out of a forced switch. That day has finally come, but at a cost. With no fire coverage, Rayquaza will surely suffer at the hands of the many steel types in the Uber's tier. Already a Pokemon that struggles to keep up with the power creep in recent years, Rayquaza may find a place in a more limited Uber's metagame, but with the addition of a new, more powerful Paradox Pokemon, I wouldn't be too sure. As we prepare to leave this terrestrial plane, we find ourselves in Earthly Paradise, where congregate the Corviknight. Although Corviknight feels the loss of Roost PP it once enjoyed, this is but a small trial as it will remain a top tier presence in the OU tier, possessing all the tools it previously employed, including the rare defog. And now to the Celestial Spheres. Ariyama is our first visitor, and we see that this bulky attacker has finally gained Drain Punch, a stab recovery move that will surely elongate the presence of both its guts and thick fat sets. A small improvement to be sure, but one that can make all the difference. A plus 1 boost versus a plus 2 boost turns a 2 KO into an Oko at times, and Swords Dance will surely replace Bulk Up for many Urshifu. While Single Strike's Wicked Blow was slightly nerfed, that power loss will be more than made up for with the increased power of the Swords Dance. The only question now is will this Pokemon be banned? While never a top tier threat, Oricorio will still be overjoyed at the addition of Quiver Dance to its arsenal. Finally able to dance without a partner, Oricorio will sell up on special attackers and resisted hits and proceed to sweep entire teams in the lower tiers. Isuian Arcanine will be much better than originally thought, as it gains everything that it possibly could have wanted. Rockhead, Flare Blitz, Head Smash, Extreme Speed, Close Combat, 
Wild Charge. A choice band Arcanine will enjoy a heavenly romp of destruction through whichever tier it lands in. In the past, Glade never effectively used his abilities. Now, with the addition of sharpness to his toolkit, Glade will gain newfound power. Sacred Sword has also been earned, allowing Glade to drop close combat and keep the same damage output while being less susceptible to revenge killing. Psycho Cut is now the preferred option over Zen Headbutt, meaning the days of missing an important stab psychic move are over. This, combined with Glade's fantastic coverage, including knockoff, will mean that he may finally gain the respect of the community. Every turtle deserves Shell Smash, and this turtle finally got it. Dreadnought was always a decent rain sweeper, but would lose out when the rain ended. With Shell Smash now, Dreadnought will outspeed all but the absolute fastest Pokemon even outside of rain, and hit like a truck too. When Regigigas formed Regidrago, it was decided that ground coverage would prove too powerful against the Steel type, one of only two types that could stand in Regidrago's way. Now, however, Arceus has decreed that offense is the way of the future, and both Earthquake and Earth Power are now Regidrago's to command. All teams that want to survive the onslaught must prepare a fairy or prey. Among the stars, Dugtrio wonders how it got here. The Swords Dance boon it has received will allow it to break Blissey and Toxapex without needing Screech, a move with poor accuracy and which doesn't boost Dugtrio's actual stats. With Swords Dance, however, Dugtrio can trap and kill its opponent and be strong enough to fight the next one too. In the realm of angels, Hisuian Braviary wings among the rest, praising Arceus for the Tinted Lens ability. While Braviary may not possess the most impressive speed stat, unresisted Esper wings will shred through anything not dark type and allow Braviary to claw its way to heretofore unimagined heights. And finally, we end our journey with Arceus himself, who is returned to cast judgment upon the mortal realm. In addition to a heavenly host of new moves at his disposal, Arceus also brings the Judgment Plate, which is such a powerful tool that even the Ubers tier will be unable to contain it. As we all praise Arceus for his many blessings, we are once again reminded that we are all insignificant nothings in his eyes, and can only pray that he chooses to continue to bless us forevermore. <laughs>